Hello. In today's episode, we will guide you through a very bursty setup for the Inquisitor Ascendancy. The new arc of surging fundamentally changes the behavior of the regular arc, causing it to simultaneously split towards nearby targets after hitting the first enemy. There is no limit to how many times it can split toward the same enemy, which is the main concept of this build. The Hydrosphere creates a stationary orb that can be targeted by your other abilities, but only once per second. You can bypass this cooldown with the Unleash support, as all additional repeats will be aimed at your initial target. It can lead up to 40 hits per single cast of your Arc of Surging. This playstyle is rather restrictive in terms of scaling your DPS. Since you are limited by Unleash cooldown, you don't need any cast speed, you should focus on doing as much damage as possible per single cast. Additionally, the Arc of Surging has a rather good effectiveness of added damage. All things considered, the best option for this setup is to use Energy Blade to add massive amounts of lightning damage to your spells, sourced from your Energy Shield. The best Ascendancy option for such a style is the Inquisitor, it allows you to very efficiently scale your Energy Shield, Critical Strike Chance, and damage by stacking Strength and Intelligence. Your maximum life gets converted into Energy Shield, which is then exchanged into added lightning damage for your spells. Your attributes increase your maximum life, energy shield, damage, and critical strike chance. This setup works with any skill, but this combo is particularly good. You will easily reach over 10,000 energy shield with a high regeneration rate, and have a decent amount of armor and evasion rating. You will also instantly leech 10% of your damage from each hit you deal. With higher investments, you can also include spell suppression. The Arc of Surging has mediocre clear speed due to its targeting mechanics, but you can swap it for the regular Arc for much better performance. Thanks to the Hydrosphere interaction you will deal an insane burst of damage, easily able to one-shot most bosses in the game. We would recommend at least 20 Divine Orbs to get all mandatory uniques and decent rare items. All pieces can be upgraded nearly indefinitely. The build consists of many mandatory unique items, which makes it quite easy to assemble. Most of them are rather cheap, so you should consider getting useful corrupted implicits. The coruscating elixir and the traitor keystone are necessary to deal with chaos damage. With proper setup the ivory tower armor grants you insane amounts of energy shield, unmatched by any other armor in the game. It won't protect you from chaos damage, since you will have no mana at all. You can get a corrupted version with useful defensive implicit such as reduced damage taken from critical strikes. Wrathpeath Globe greatly improves your spell damage and critical strike chance based on your maximum life, which you stack for the energy shield conversion anyway. It also grants a bit of maximum life, energy shield, and block chance. The Crown of the Inward Eye improves your maximum life and energy shield, which is very important for this build. The Transfiguration modifiers also improve your damage a bit, based on your defensive investments. Those gloves greatly scale your energy shield and evasion rating with the attributes you stack anyway. They also grant a decent amount of maximum life. They are quite common, so you should aim for corrupted implicit, such as an additional frenzy charge or curse on hit. The Cyclopean coil greatly improves all your attributes and provides useful bonuses based on them. Your highest attributes should be quite balanced, so it shouldn't be a big problem to get shock immunity. You can use the intrinsic catalyst to improve the attribute modifiers even more. At first, you should use the Astramentus amulet to get tons of attributes, including dexterity. You should replace it fairly quickly, but only if you have enough dexterity from your all attribute modifiers, you shouldn't waste your suffixes on the dexterity alone. Later you should replace your amulet with this unique talisman. It can grant you up to 32% increased attributes, but even the lower rolls are worth it, especially if you match it with other useful modifiers such as global defenses, crit multiplier, or physical damage reduction. You will need the traitor keystone obtainable through this jewel to sustain your flasks, which are necessary to deal with chaos damage. It also provides a bit of dexterity and two potentially useful bonuses depending on the randomized variant you get. Each of these jewels can grant you over 100 of each attribute when placed far away from the Templar's starting location. 
Ideally, they should grant both intelligence and strength, but it will be very expensive, so you can aim for a different combination with at least one of those attributes. This jewel can greatly improve the effect of your magic jewels. It makes them much stronger than regular rare jewels even on a lower budget, and can be scaled indefinitely high if you prefer so. The effect amplification gets rounded down, so don't overpay for a slightly better roll if you don't have to. The Watcher's Eye increases your maximum life and energy shield, and provides very valuable bonuses depending on your aura setup. You can adjust your offensive aura to the modifiers you get from this jewel. On the remaining rare items you should aim for lacking resistances, attributes, maximum life, or spell suppression. To improve your damage via other means than attributes you should focus only on the critical strike multiplier. The dexterity is the least useful attribute, but you still need plenty of it for your gem requirements. Your weapon will be replaced by the energy blade, but it will retain the sockets of the original weapon. You can wear any one-handed weapon with an abyssal socket to use additional abyss jewel. On your boots you should look for movement speed, maximum life, spell suppression, chaos or elemental resistances, attributes, or energy shield. You can use the veiled modifier to get an onslaught on kill, improving your clear speed significantly. On your rare rings you can get a lot of attributes or fix your remaining resistances. They should also provide maximum life. You can get a bit of cast speed to make your gameplay smoother, but it doesn't affect your DPS. The Amethyst Ring would be the best, as it provides a large amount of Chaos Resistances, but you should prioritize capping your regular Elemental Resistances first. On your Rare Jewels, you should aim for Maximum Life, Energy Shield, and various Critical Strike Multiplier modifiers. You can also use them to fix your Resistances or get a bit more Attributes. If you use the Adorned Jewel you should use Corrupted Magic Jewels, they can easily outperform rare jewels due to doubled maximum life scaling while providing a similar amount of critical strike multiplier. On a higher budget, you should look for useful synthesis implicits, but it is not required to make this setup worth it. You should use your abyss jewel as a source of corrupted blood immunity. If you have it elsewhere, try to get a lot of maximum life, energy shield, lacking resistances, or critical strike multiplier. You can obtain tons of attributes and maximum life from a cluster jewel with an increased effect of small passives. A perfect cluster will be very expensive, but you can upgrade it gradually as your budget increases, starting with just a basic one. You can also get a bit of resistances here. Thanks to this flask enemy's chaos damage won't bypass your energy shield, which would be lethal as you reserve most of your life with auras. It also greatly improves your fire resistance. Forgetting to activate this flask may lead to your character's death. With the Traitor Keystone you should use a limited amount of flasks. We recommend using Bismuth Flask with additional Elemental Resistance Bonus and a Quicksilver Flask with Armor Rating Bonus. This spell is the main feature of this build. It causes Lightning Arc to surge toward the targeted enemy dealing damage and splitting simultaneously toward nearby enemies. It doesn't limit how many splits can target the same foe. The Unleash support is necessary in this setup, as you can target the Hydrosphere only once per second. Almost all the damage comes from the Spellblade and Battlemage effects, but you should try to get level 21 of your main gem to increase the number of splits. The Hydrosphere summons a stationary orb that drenches nearby enemies. It can interact with your skills to cause secondary effects. You can hit it only once per second, but the additional repeats from the Unleash support can bypass that cooldown. To make it smoother you can use the faster casting support. You can also implement other utility options like a culling strike or power charge on crit supports if you have spare sockets. Energy Blade is a buff that you can activate to significantly lower your maximum energy shield and replace your current weapon with the Energy Blade which damage is based on your energy shield. The additional quality of the Energy Blade gem granted by the Enhanced Support is very useful. It lessens the Energy Shield penalty, thus increasing your damage and durability. Determination is your main defensive aura that grants a lot of flat armor rating and helps improve it further. The Eternal Blessing makes a linked aura free to use, at the cost of disabling all other mana reserving auras. It doesn't affect auras that reserve your life. 
Grace is your second defensive aura, it greatly improves your evasion rating, allowing you to evade incoming attacks. You can also use the Purity of Elements aura if you severely lack elemental resistances. Discipline is a useful defensive aura that improves your energy shield, which is the main source of damage and survivability. The Wrath is an offensive aura that improves your lightning damage. You can also use the Zealotry instead, depending on the Watcher's Eye Jewel you get. You will need the Enlightened support to lower their life reservation, so you can use all three auras and have enough life to cast your skills. Shield Charge performs a quick charge towards the targeted location. It scales with your attack and movement speed, and has no cooldown. You can make this skill faster by supplementing it with faster attack support. The additional quality from the enhanced support would also be useful here, if you can manage the sockets. Frostblink is an instant short-ranged teleport that leaves a chilling ground in both teleport locations. It can be used during other actions. Steelskin is a guard skill that creates a small barrier that absorbs incoming damage and disables bleeding on you during its effect. Conductivity is your main curse. It lowers the lightning resistance of affected enemies by a large amount. You can use a second curse after you anoint the Whispers of Doom notable on your amulet. The elemental weakness further lowers the elemental resistance of your foes. The Defiance banner improves your armor and evasion rating, as well as reduces the critical strike chance of nearby enemies. You can also use Vitality Aura if you don't have enough reservation efficiency. Killing all bandits for two additional passive points is the best option, it will allow you to pick up even more attributes. The Soul of the Brine King is the best choice for your major pantheon power, it grants you immunity to freeze and prevents stun locks. As your minor pantheon power you should take the Soul of Shikari to reduce the damage you take from poisons, but the Soul of Ralakesh can also be used if you don't have immunity to corrupting blood yet. The final setup requires many endgame items and lots of attributes, if you are inexperienced with this style we would advise leveling your character as a regular spellcaster. The Arc of Surging can be used as soon as you acquire the Hydrosphere, which is at level 34. You can check out our leveling guide for Templar using lightning spells found in the written guide on our site for more tips. The final passive tree is very unconventional for most other builds. It reaches many distant keystones, which are vital for the build functionality. Usually, this kind of patching would be very inefficient, but in this case, picking up attributes is very beneficial, and the long route allows you to greatly buff split personality jewels for even more attributes. You will also have access to many jewel sockets, which is very important for the adorned jewel setup. In total, you will be using 6 keystones. The blood magic allows you to reserve life with your auras, while the eternal youth solves your spell casting sustain as you will never break the life recharge. The iron will and pain attunement greatly improve your damage. The zealot's oath is a defensive keystone that improves your regeneration. Lastly, the Trader obtainable via Timeless Jewel ensures good uptime on your flasks. The Split Personality Jewels should be socketed in your Cluster Jewel, as far from the Templar starting location as possible. The Brutal Restraint has two potential spots to be socketed. The Iron Grip Keystone location grants slightly more dexterity, but the Agnostic location is usually less contested, making it cheaper to obtain useful bonuses on nearby notables. We encourage you to try this kind of build at least once, it is very universal and fun to play. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel. Have a good day, and see you next time.